So, hi, I'm sitting here with Eric Overfield. We're actually at the SharePoint Saturday Bend, Bend, Oregon. Love it. I'm sitting in the theater room where the keynote was held this morning. And so Eric is an expert in SharePoint branding. And Eric, why don't you just tell a little bit about yourself, your company, and kind of your background. Sure. My name's Eric Overfield. I work with Fixamil. Uh, we've been in business for, since 98, but I've been working with uh, SharePoint. We've been working with SharePoint since 2004. Uh, really been focusing more since SharePoint 2010 because you couldn't really brand before that. You could brand right. 7, 07 a little, but 2010 was where the branding really came on. So I love it. it it's fun. Most people hate branding. Nah, we really enjoy it. So what's the, so we were talking a little bit this morning about, so we had a session on branding that's here. We've got another one from a, from another vendor that's, that's doing a session, yeah, another Rackspace. speaker here, Rackspace is also just talking about branding, but, um, so what are the, what are the issues, the, the, the biggest questions that you see? What are, what are people talking about that they have questions about branding in SharePoint 2010? Uh, first, I would see people don't know how to brand SharePoint. There's also the argument that Microsoft I think validly makes no brand SharePoint because it will break the upgrade path, and that that makes sense. I think it's a reasonable thing to say, but at the same time, a lot of people do want a custom experience. So then they say, "Well, now what do I do? How do I get started?" So then we start teaching about master pages, we start teaching about page layouts and whatnot, and the CSS that is needed uh, to actually brand a SharePoint site. But the hot topic, what I what my sessions were on today, that I think is really cool, is how are you going to make a SharePoint site work on mobile? How are you going to make it work on your new uh, the new Windows phones, how are you going to make it work on the new surfaces and whatnot? Because out of the box, SharePoint has a mobile interface that doesn't really work all that well on that. And so this, there's this cool new topic we've been all talking about recently, which is responsive web design, that I think is really so cool. This is what you also came up and presented to the, uh, the Seattle yep. SharePoint user group. Exactly. Program. That was an overview of, of what we can do in responsive web design was one of the approaches. But um, the, today I did, it was two sessions, and the second one was more in-depth, how to actually apply responsive web design. So that question, about your question, what question am I hearing is, how am I going to get this to work on not only my uh, on our desktop, but how are we going to get it to work on our boss's new tablet? So is that the, so from a branding experience, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people think of, uh, you know, the, the look and feel of an intranet site, but mm -hmm. that's, I mean, is that really where, where things are going? Are people becoming more accustomed to the SharePoint out of the box look and feel for that experience? thinking more about um, branding and usability of alternate access into SharePoint? Uh, we're finding that it's the branding for everything, including for your intranet, because you have a corporate identity that you want to portray also on your intranet. But also, if you're a public-facing site, you're going to want a custom experience. So we're seeing it for internet, extranet, and internet sites, even for your extranet. You've got your vendors coming to your, your extranet site to access your, your product data, whatever it is that they may need in your extranet. But they're coming to your site from, from Netflix. They're coming to your site from these full-featured web 2.0 kind of sites that are very interactive. You need to keep up with that. And, and, and you see that as your company, that you don't want to be some laggard behind company. And so they want a little more. They want it personal. Well, I think that this, uh, I think that's an important point to make is that um, you talk about and, you know, why, why do you want to have this richer, more visually appealing, and functional environment for your external facing sites. Well, it's because that's what people want, they're accustomed to, yep. uh, like that. And then, uh, you know, so that really goes to like that, my first part of that comment. It's like, well, you, the same can be applied to the intranet. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you want to have this beautiful house um, and then walk in and it's just destroyed on the inside. No, you want it to be beautiful inside and out. Exactly. Um, one of the, uh, when I talk about uh, you know, uh, productivity inside SharePoint, that's, I'm presenting on that today, but I uh, talk a lot about productivity, and a lot of that is um, you know, functional design as well. So while it doesn't have to be extravagant um, branding mm -hmm. and the, the look and feel around that, it should be very functional, um, but if, if people are, are stumbling at the simple navigation and movement inside the site and they're not sure if they're moving in between an internet and an intranet and an extranet site, you know, the differences between those are all reasons that you want to think about customizing that experience. Yes. Now, in SharePoint 2013, Microsoft spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, going back to the Bauhaus School of Design to create a really good looking interface. And that's gonna be fine for a lot of people because it does look more modern, it does look good, but there's still a lot of people that want a branded experience still. Even though Microsoft is, is recommending not to because of the upgrade path, I understand, and that's going to be right for most people. 
a lot of people still want their custom experience. They still want it to be theirs. They don't want it to be their SharePoint site. They want it to be their company intranet, named and branded their, their thing. You know? the SharePoint is a great platform. They're using it for a reason, but it doesn't need to be known as really SharePoint. They want it to be their intranet. They want it to be custom. They want it to be, so their employees are proud of it. They're going to use the internet. The data may be there, but if it, if it doesn't look the way you think it should look, if it doesn't function in a modern way, we find the user adoption goes way down. So, so you, you talked about like your um, the work that you do, that Pixel Mill does inside uh, you know, SharePoint has, you, while you've been working for it with a number of years, but you've really been increasing your visibility and yes. more work in the SharePoint yeah. space. Do you see that because you were looking at a way of expanding the business into a new area, or was it being driven by the community and your customers that you're just seeing them do more and more with SharePoint? Well, uh, over the last couple of years, we started to see people stop creating these general websites and they've been platforms. And we wanted a good CMS platform. We've been working with SharePoint for a long time and realized that it's, I, I think it's the best. I think it's, it's the right system to use. So at that point, we've decided to pick specific platforms and that's the CMS we decided to pick because it has so much features. I like to say that SharePoint, it's an erector set, it can build you anything. It can build you a moped to 747. And I like that ability. I don't want to be stuck with just building the moped that will get me from point A to point B. I like a system that can handle anything. SharePoint has that. The user base has been growing. Obviously, that's an easy one as well. It's continuing to grow. I'm just going to make the point that you said, you know, that um, what's funny is that people want SharePoint because of the broad range of things that it can do. Absolutely. It is that director set. It's also probably one of the primary criticisms of SharePoint is that it like does too much. And, 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 you know, it's yeah, I suppose so. But. And, and, and generally, it's not the same two people making the you know that comment around that. So one of the uh, you know the scary things about SharePoint is that it does so much. One of the most powerful things that people love about it is that it does so much. Yeah, but there's such a great community. You can learn how to customize it, and that's just. It's just the truth. I mean, all these SharePoint Saturday events is here to help you learn how to use SharePoint so that an edge user can customize 95% of it, right? They can figure out how to use content types to build lists. They can figure out how to, to create pages so that a lot of customization on the back end is not needed. They don't need custom web parts. Right. There's a great partner network to help you build with backup tools and help you do all that other stuff. And if you want to do branding, there's companies like Pixel and others to help with those kind of things. And I think you'll find that your total uh, ROI uh, it, it, with SharePoint is comparable with any other platform. You can go to an open source platform, now you need a PHP programmer on the staff, you're gonna need a MySQL programmer on the staff, you're gonna have to somewhat post all this, do the cost, and you'll find out that SharePoint's almost in the same line. And you get the power of Microsoft behind you. Right. Does Microsoft have safe code? Yes, Drupal? Can't tell you that. Right. Yeah, so, so you have the support, you have, you certainly have the partner ecosystem around yeah, that. But huge. there's, you know, from again, from a design standpoint, I mean, Microsoft is, as you mentioned, it has made strides, huge strides, and with 2013, oh, yeah. I expect even more out of that. Uh, you know, just, you know, even from a management of the design attributes, the aspects of your your site, as well as what's available, how it looks out of the box. I mean, the out of the box experience yeah. much improved. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, in, in 2013. And I think that the SharePoint 2013 in the brand new world has these things called device channels, which device channels they allow you to create tailored interfaces to your different devices. That's awesome. That's because the mobile interface of 2010 was limiting. It wasn't built during the time when everyone had uh, these surfaces and, uh, and had Windows phones. They just didn't have that, so there wasn't this great need for it. Now with, with device channels, it opens up all sorts of abilities to create tailored interfaces, and then if you throw responsive web design on top of that, you can make this experience that's really good. And I still think you can build it in such a way that it won't get very path to no, I mean, that's the whole point. And that, the device channels is a great exa example. And for those that aren't familiar with it, it's essentially what uh, SharePoint 2013 provides this construct for your content, for the presentation of your content for different models. So you could have the same content that you want served out in mobile, tablet, and, you know, and the web or PC experience, um, that you build this construct for each one of those formats but then once it's built, you publish the content one time to that place, and that's the CMS portion, and publishes across that. 
And so you're not having to open up a browser in a mobile phone and pan around with, you know, to you try and get to the content. Zoom in, zoom out. Right, it's stuff. built for, designed for that. Absolutely, and it's using custom master pages to basically do that, where you can create a custom master page, with, or just a simple master page with CSS to help make an experience for a mobile phone or a tablet. And you can have multiple devices map to um, a single channel, to a specific channel. So it's not one channel for your Surface, one channel for your iPad, one channel for your Nexus. All three can be in one channel if you do that. So I think that the device channels of the 2013 is going to be really huge in the branding world. And if they, you then add some ideas of like responsive web design, you're going to be able to hit all your different devices, creating some really lean, compact uh, code that is going to be uh, it's going to load real fast too. Good stuff. Great. So, how can people get in touch with you? Fixamil.com is a great way. Uh, on Twitter, uh, at EricOverfield.com. Uh, my blog, blog.fixamil.com slash Eric Overfield. Uh, I've also been blogging at Nothing But Branding, which is a, a Mark Miller initiative, which I think is really cool. And there's another guy, Benjamin Allen, who's also really good into branding, who's running that. Uh, right now, what I'm focusing on is the HTML5 and responsive web design with the SharePoint, which is looking really good. And, and 2013 is fully released. I'm looking at some great article series because there's going to be a lot of good stuff to write about. Yeah, looking forward to it. Good. Well, thanks a lot. Sounds good.